For today's headlines, Chinese military plane delivers COVID-19 vaccines. Officials to fire up public confidence on vaccines. AstraZeneca's AZD-122 next COVID-19 vaccine to arrive. In-person classes in low-risk areas back. Sinovac arrival jumpstarts Philippine vaccine program says go. Derek Ramsey says there's a spark in relationship with Ellen Adarna. Did Kai Soto fail to make it to NBA G League? Easterlies affecting Southern Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Good morning. I am Sandy Locos and you are watching Tribune News on Q. Today is Monday, March 1 and now the news. A Chinese military aircraft carrying the first doses of COVID-19 vaccines for the country landed and taxied at the Villamore Air, Air Base at 4.15 p.m. on Sunday. President Rodrigo Duterte personally welcomed the arrival of the vaccines and thank the Chinese government for the donation. In his speech, Duterte said the government cannot afford to waste time or resources in the distribution of the vaccines because precious lives are at stake. He also said that the COVID-19 vaccines should be treated as a global public good and be made available to the rich and the poor. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque called the event historic as on board the plane are 600,000 doses of Sinovac vaccines that will help millions of Filipinos fight COVID-19. The number is not enough as 70 million people need to be inoculated to establish herd immunity, but the mainland's donation matters a lot to a government badly needing something to jumpstart its vaccination program and doing its share in manifesting the global pandemic. In order to boost public confidence in the newly arrived COVID-19 vaccines, officials involved in the government's response to the COVID-19 pandemic will be at the forefront of the nationwide inoculation program, says Senator Christopher Bongo. In an interview on Sunday, Go said that no less than vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr., Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, and testing czar Vince Dizon are set to simultaneously receive a vaccine shot early Monday. A number of healthcare frontliners, as well as an official of the Philippine General Hospital, will also take, in, take part in the event, which will be held in various locations. The Food and Drug Administration earlier disclosed that the China-made vaccines are not recommended for healthcare workers, who are constantly exposed to COVID-19 patients after it nearly reported a 50.4% efficacy among medical workers in Brazil. Also, it should, not, it should only be administered to clinically healthy individuals aged 18 to 59 years old. However, DOH Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verhere clarified that while clinical trials show lower efficacy in preventing mild symptoms, the vaccine is still effective against moderate and severe symptoms and this means that it can effic effic effectively reduce morbid morbidity and mortality. The coronavirus vaccines developed and manufactured by the University of Oxford and British-Swedish firm AstraZeneca is the second vaccine brand to arrive in the Philippines next to CoronaVac or China's Sinovac Biotech. The government announced over the weekend that 525,600 doses of AstraZeneca's AZD-122 will be shipped to the country soon after local government units and the private sector secured the millions of its doses through tripartite tri agreements with the National Pandemic Task Force. The first batch of AstraZeneca's vaccines is sourced from the World Health Organization-led COVAX facility a global initiative which seeks to ensure equitable access to coronavirus vaccines. 
Meanwhile, the doses ordered by local government units and some 200 Philippine companies are expected to arrive in the third and fourth quarter of the year. AstraZeneca's vaccine is developed from an adenovirus dubbed as Padoxil, a virus that typically causes colds among chimpanzees. Researchers have modified the virus so that it can carry a gene of SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. Once injected into the body, the vaccine triggers an immune response producing antibodies and memory cells that will recognize and fight off the virus. Adenovirus-vectored vaccines have been in development for a long time, in particular against malaria, HIV, and Ebola. Tribune News on 2 will be back after these reminders. Araneta City, home to the country's first indoor shopping mall, the world's original thriller, and the first ever Bini Bini pageant. Now a place for your first win, your first catch, your first home, your first big break, your first date, and even your first love. Araneta City, the city of firsts. Senators on Sunday supported the pilot implementation of face-to-face -face classes in low-risk areas before it can be resumed nationwide. Maintaining that the risk of COVID-19 still lingers, Senator Sonny Angara said that while he wants to see students back in schools, testing the rule out of in-person classes in one to two provinces with minimal to zero cases might be better to ensure its safety. The areas of implementation, he added, should have a strong health system that can handle the rise of coronavirus cases in the event of a super spreader. According to Department of Education under Secretary Nepomuceno Malaluan, 1,065 schools or 5 schools per division have been chosen for the pilot reopening. Possible start of the dry run is in August 2021. 17 months after schools were closed in March 2020. The Philippines remains the only Southeast Asian nation that has yet to reopen schools since the global pandemic outbreak. Meantime, Senator Bongo hailed the arrival of the country's first vaccines from Sinovac on Sunday, saying it should jumpstart the government's vaccination program. In his column going forward, Go expressed gratitude to Beijing for the 600,000 doses of vaccines generously donated by its neighbor. The jobs will be able to accommodate 300,000 individuals who will receive the vaccines based on the list provided by the National Immunization Technical Advisory Groups. The government is looking forward to procuring more vaccines produced by other countries including 525,600 doses of AstraZeneca, which was supposed to arrive today but will have to be rescheduled next week. In showbiz, the reclam seems happily in love, this time with Ellen Adarna. After weeks of speculation, the Capuso actor confirmed his relationship with the sexy star in an exclusive interview with Pep.ph on February 26. As close neighbors, Derek and Ellen often have dinners and workout sessions together. It was also a few weeks ago when the 44-year-old actor was seen on a trip with a 32-year-old actress and her son in Anilao, Batangas. Multiple sources also said she joined the hunk actor's family dinner on Valentine's Day. Further into the exclusive report, Derek revealed that they have been in a relationship for a month. Derek, in November 2 in November 2020, had confirmed he and fellow GMA Netflix star Andrea Torres had called it quits 
after a year of being in a relationship. Previously, Derek was in a relationship with Angelica Panganiban from 2006 to 2012, who was linked for a time with actor John Lloyd Cruz, who was Ellen Adarna's ex-partner from 2017 to 2019. Derek was in a brief romantic relationship with Christine Reyes, who was also rumored to have dated John Lloyd. We will be back. Stay with us. In sports, Kari Soto's sudden disappearance from the NBA G League is perhaps one of the biggest mysteries in international basketball, according to Daily Tribune sports editor Julius Manigad in his column, Hold My Dear. Since bolting out of the Ignite training camp, nothing much was heard from the 7-foot-3 Soto except that he was spotted at the arrival area of the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in February to join the Gilas Filipinas bubble. However, when the third window of the FIBA Asia Cup qualifiers was cancelled, there were no official statements, no photos, and no traces that he really flew out of the country to reunite with his NBA G League club, wrote Manikad. Manikad said it was questionable that Soto left Ignite to play in a tournament where the Filipinos have a massive chance of winning. But it might have been part of an exit plan in case things do not go well in the United States and his quest to become the first Filipino to play in the NBA. Citing a longtime basketball observer's speculation, Manikad said Soto could have gotten the boot even before Ignite took the flight to Florida to see action in the NBA G League because he wouldn't be allowed by the team to easily leave if he really made the final roster. Maybe Soto was given a very limited role like a spot in the reserve list or something so the people around Soto decided to send him back to Manila and play in the FIBA third window instead. Another source cited by Manikad said, Soto's exit might have something to do with the presence of his Indian teammate Prince Pal Singh. The source said the NBA had been itching to penetrate the massive Indian market as part of its expansion program and having the six-foot Singh developing into a legitimate professional player could be of a good start. If ever Brian and his staff were left to choose between two Two Asians, Soto and Singh, the decision would be a no-brainer. The easterlies or hot wind blowing from the warm Pacific Ocean is expected to bring humid weather today like in the past days, according to Pagasa. The easterlies and localized thunderstorms are expected to bring partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers in Metro Manila and the rest of the country. The highest temperature is expected to be 30 degrees Celsius at 11 a.m. and the lowest temperature is 24.5 degrees Celsius at 6 a.m. Metro Manila is expected to have a temperature of 31 degrees Celsius at noon. Meanwhile, Pagasa said zero or only one storm is expected this month of March based on the weather data of the agency in the past several years. And that wraps up the stories this morning. Catch the latest news on our website, 
sherbrin.net.ph and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sherbrin Now. The Daily Sherbrin is one with the nation in facing the COVID-19 crisis and in line with this, the Daily Tribune Digital Edition and Press Reader is now available for free online. You can also download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store or Google Play to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune is also inviting everyone to join its community Viber Kachibu to get updates on the freshest and hottest news and entertainment stories of the day. Tarsito emoticons are also available on our Community Viber. Just visit the sticker store and search for Kachibu Community. And before we go, we would like to thank the SM Store and Araneta Center. Again, this is Sandy Locos and you're watching Tribune News on Q. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay at home. Good morning and have a nice day. I am Elmer Navarro Manuel. Coronavirus case. I am Sandy Locos. Duterte, Dadalo. Pasipe, Sanchez. Good morning, I am Vernon Velasco. Only government authorized to... Magandang hapon. Ako si Paul Yung Soko. Hospital, naghahanda para sa COVID. Ako si Luis Nintan at ito ang Tribune. Kay Kramsi, may mensahe kay Andres. Ako si Jomel Garner. At ito... Pagsali sa face-to-face -face prepare for the fun. Tell COVID cases, tumalo sa 7. Missed the chance to acquire 10. Luis Lisa. Si Jomel Garner. O si Ray Sanchez. Vernon Velasco. O si Paul Yung Song. Siyan si Lopez. I am Elmer Navarro Manuel and this is Tribune News on Q. Fiber is the free and secure way to connect with friends and family anywhere. Send messages and make phone and video calls for free. Download Viber now.